Hi everybody. We're going to look again at SAT, PSAT. This is a PSAT section that is a non-calculator. Uh, I'm doing it without preview of any kind, so uh, there could be some missteps but I'm hoping that uh, we can keep the time and we can do it quickly. And I'm going to go through uh, some of my thinking as I do the problem. So hopefully you'll enjoy and be able to do it with me. Uh, I believe this is a 2017 PSAT section, but I'll give you the date and put it in the description. Anyway, here we go. So the first one is obviously a system of equations and there are 214 tickets in all. Uh, that means that the full price plus uh, the reduced price has to be 214. Well, sorry, F plus R has to be 214. F represents the number of full, R represents the number of reduced. This one, uh, the cost, the total cost is 2145. So this is a possibility, this is a possibility, and this one is not. Now I'm out of these two, uh, I would guess that full price is probably $11 and reduced price is $8.25. So that's going to be B and I'm going to move on. Um, I like to put a little check mark to mean that I should come back and double check it, but it looks good to me. Uh, number two, we've got 4M plus 2 equals 42. What is 2M plus 1? Divide everything by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, and we get 21. 2m plus 1 equals 21. Uh, this is a trick. I'm solving for an expression instead of an m. What most people would do is solve for the m and get 20, and then they would, sorry, solve for m and get 10, and then they would substitute it back in. But it works either way, of course. Uh, number three. Let's see. Somebody wrote this on here. I don't know why. All right, we've got... 2x squared minus 4 equals x squared. Um, subtract the x squared, add the 4. However you want to do it, you get x squared equals 4. And it says which of the following is a solution. Uh, it's not the only solution. You could also have negative 2. But there it is. Done. I would say that's absolutely for sure. Um, number 4. Uh, city transit system bus rides cost $2 each and subway costs $3. She spent no more than 56. Uh, no more than means that it's less than or equal to 56. And that is 2S plus, oh wait, I'm sorry. Uh, subway rides cost $3 and bus tickets cost $2. 2B is less than or equal to 56. And it says B plus S, S plus B has to be at least 20 bus rides. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. And she paid for at least 20 bus rides. So B has to be greater than or equal to 20. And so what is the greatest number? So 20 is the least number of bus rides. So 20 is the least number of bus rides. And we're going to have to solve this. We subtract the 40 and we get 3s has to be less than or equal to. Uh, when I subtract 40, it's 16. So divide by 3 and s has to be less than or equal to 5. So it is c. Um, it could have been 5 and a third, but of course you can't have a third of it arrived. So it looks like that's, that's the answer. Uh, a little bit slow, but there it is. This one is a trick you have to watch out for. They will always have one of these. Notice that subtraction is going to give you problems. What I do is I think of it as a negative 2 that gets distributed. Be very careful. Uh, that is going to be, sorry, z squared minus 10z, and then we're going to distribute the negative 2. That's minus 28z uh, minus 12. And so then we have to get the equivalent expression. Looks like minus 38z minus 12. And there it is, c. And we're moving on. Notice that I work very quickly. I'm trying to spend less than a minute on each problem. Um, hopefully you can see it. I'm going to hit my autofocus just to make sure it's nice and focused. There, that should be good. Uh, the equation above gives the total monthly price P in dollars for using an online gaming service. 
the total monthly price consists of a flat monthly fee, which is the $5, and the $1.20. What is the value of X? And this is each game. That is the number of games, because each one costs $1.20, and there's a $5 flat monthly fee. You need to be able to interpret these things. The $5 is what you start paying, and then you pay $1.20 per game, and the charge in dollars per playing X games. That's not true. Uh, the number of months, nope. The flat monthly fee, nope. The number of games is A. A lot of people are going to get, uh, watch out for that distractor B. It is not the charge in dollars for playing X games. A dollar 20X is the charge for X games. Anyway, there it is. Oh, we want to solve for T. They told us we've got a formula and we're going to solve for T. The first thing is to get rid of the M, because I want T by itself. So I'm going to multiply by M on both sides. And then I'm going to take and divide by L. So I have MV squared is equal to LT. And I want to get uh, T by itself, so I'm dividing by L. MV squared divided by L is A, and we're moving on. Number eight, let's see. Looks like we have a system here. And it says there are two solutions to the system. What is the value of y1 plus y2? Wow, that's interesting. Okay, there are two solutions to this thing. Um, it says that y uh, plus x plus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to subtract x and subtract 1. So y equals negative x minus 1. Now I'm going to take this and substitute it. And I get negative x minus 1 is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'm going to add the 1 to both sides, and I'm going to add the x. Now, normally I would just do it, and I wouldn't write it out, but I wanted to show it to you. Now, I end up with x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. Now, we want to get our 2x values, and then we still have to change them to y values, and then we still have to add them. This is a kind of a hard problem. Um, you're going to have to factor this into its two parts. And we have a product of 2 and a sum of 3, so we're talking about x plus 1, x plus 2, and our two x's are negative 1 and negative 2. But that's not our two y's. Our y values are take this and stick it in here. Uh, that double negative makes it a positive 1 minus 1 is 0. And the negative 2, when you put it in, gives you 2 minus 1, which is 1. And there's your answer, D. Long problem. There's a lot going on there. I'm sure there's something faster that you could do, but there it is. Uh, do you substitution to solve the system? Found the two x's, substituted them in, and found the two y's, and then I added them together. Woof. All right. Looks like we have a parabola, and we've got a function, and it's a parabola. It's going through 0, 3, so it looks like it's y equals x squared plus 3. That's what it looks like. Now it says, uh, there it is, x squared plus 3, they told me. Uh, the graph is shifted 2 to the right. That means we're going to move it to here, and 4 units up, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to go through 2, 7. This is going to be the vertex. Which of the following defines g? So we want x to be 2 and y to be 7. If I put 2 here, I get 7 out. a is a solution, and it'll zero out my x. So there's the solution that we're looking for is a. Uh, Hector uses, used a tool called an auger. Sorry, here we go. Uh, to remove corn from a storage, the bin contained 24,000. Uh, after five hours, he's got this much. If the auger continues to remove at that rate. So we're looking for rate of change. And we started with 0, 24,000. And we ended up with 5, 19, 350. And remember, this one doesn't have a calculator. So kind of could be a problem here. Uh, let's take a look. After five hours, uh, what is the total number of hours? Well, I've been using the auger when 12,840 
bushels of corn remain. Wow, this is a tough one. Okay, so you've got to get your slope, which is the rate of change. So we have to look at the difference in the y's. Uh, when I subtract this, I am going to get, uh, looks like 4,650 divided by 5. And 5 goes in there, 9 uh, three zero nine hundred and thirty. Looks like it's doing nine hundred and thirty. We still got to take the twenty four thousand eight hundred and forty. Uh, oh, sorry, twenty four thousand, and we have to subtract the twelve thousand eight forty. This is really hard. Uh, it looks like if I estimate it, we want to get rid of about half of them, and we're losing about a thousand. Uh, we're losing a little less than a thousand, so it looks like it's going to take 12 hours. I'm just going to, I'm going to put a question mark on this one. Now, the reason I put a question mark is I'm only estimating. Uh, you don't want to do the specifics. You don't have, you only have a minute. Uh, I could do the subtraction. I could do the division, but I'm going to guess it's going to be 12. Um, let's move on. The population P of a certain city Y years after the last sentence is modeled below. Okay, this is an exponential function, and this is the population. This was its initial population, and then this is the rate that it's increasing over the years. Uh, the city decreased. Oh, so it decreased. So R has to be negative, and it has to be between... Uh, it has to be like a fraction or a decimal, and it has to be negative. So it has to be between 0 and and negative one because it says that the population is decreasing. It's going down every year by a certain percentage. That means or a fraction, and this is a fraction, so this is B, and I would say that's pretty sure. All right, number 12. Let's see how we're doing for time. We're right on time. Uh, one minute each. Uh, a is equal to C plus D. Which of the following is equivalent to this? Ah, interesting. Okay. My guess is that they're going to want to take out the C plus D somehow. Let's see if we can find a way to do it. Mm. Nope. Here's the deal. Oh, this is tough. Uh, can we factor this thing? Doesn't look like it. Wow, that's weird. Oh, there we go. Okay. We want this... And so I'm thinking that if A is equal to C plus D, then if I take a negative A, it's going to be X minus C minus D. And if I square this, I'm going to get, I'm thinking it's this one right here. Because that's going to give me my X squared. Uh, it's going to give me a plus C squared. Shoot, that's not it. Huh. Nope, that's not going to work. It's not that one. Uh, let's see. Plus A is definitely out. Uh, this one is definitely out because that's going to give me X squared minus A squared. Oh, wait. Ah, there it is. You see, this is a perfect square of this and with the negative put into it. So if I look at this thing, this thing squared is c squared plus 2cd plus d squared. And this is the negative of that. So it's this guy right here. Very tricky. A lot of stuff going on in there. If you're not sure what I did, um, it looked good, but then when I multiplied it, I got a positive c squared. Anyway, a lot of stuff going on there. Let's move on. Carol purchased 45 ceramic figures from an online store. The online store charged D plus $5 per figure for the first 30 and D dollars per figure for each figure in excess of 30. Okay, so she charges an extra $5 for the first 30 figurines. So it costs an extra $150. That's the extra fee. Um, so the 150 is the extra fee and then it's 30 D. So each figure costs $30. Uh, no, no, I'm not right. Uh, purchased 45. Uh, for the 
first 30. 30 D is the price plus the 150 plus another 15. So it's going to be this one because she has to buy 45 of them for D dollars plus the 150 extra fee. So this is the trick right here because there's an extra 15 D. Uh, if you like, you can say it's 30 times D plus 5 plus 15 D. And when you add that together, of course, you get this. Anyway, there it is. Uh, so this one's D. Okay, we're getting there. And we're in 15 minutes. Uh, keeping up pretty close. What is the length of PQ? This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remember that this is a special triangle where this is equilateral. And this is half of an equilateral triangle where this is 4 and this is 4 root 3. This is a memorization situation right here. And what is the length of PQ? It happens to be exactly 4. Uh, the equation y equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants, is graphed. The line contains these points. What is the value of m? So they just want the slope. So take 40 minus 0 over 0 minus negative 20. Got to watch out for that double negative. That ends up being 2. And you put it in your, in your deal. Uh, number 16 is a radical. Sorry. This is the fifth root of x cubed, which of course is the same as x to the three-fifths power, and x is greater than one. What is the value of a? Uh, this is important because uh, it can't be zero because then it wouldn't work, and it certainly can't be, well, it could be negative actually, but it says it's greater than one, but it's still. What's the value of a? It's just if you know how to write your uh, exponentials and it's to the three-fifths power, so it's 3 over 5. I would write it as a fraction rather than a decimal. It just makes more sense. Last one, uh, solution to the system. What is the value of x times y? Well, we're going to subtract, subtract, subtract. I'm going to multiply the whole top equation, sorry, by negative 1. Let me see if I can get this autofocused for you. There we go. And we're going to add it together. So I'm going to end up with 2x. This is going to eliminate the y's. And this is going to be 8. So x is equal to 4. Not my answer. x plus y equals 9. So y is equal to 5. And we multiply and we get 20. And we are done. And we did it in 17 minutes. So I would go back and double check my weird question. Number 10. And I would go ahead and do this subtraction, which is something like, uh, let's see, that's going to be 11,160. And 12 times this should give me that. Uh, 930. That's 9,300 plus 1860. And I get... 11, 160. Ta-da! I am absolutely positive that is the correct answer. There you go. Hopefully it makes sense to you. If you have any questions, please send them on in the comments, and I will go in depth on any of the problems and explain them in the, con in, in the uh, response. So hopefully you got it. And we are going to see if I can get this thing paused here.